welcome to the autopsy bench. Uh, today's autopsy is on a very sad um, short nose differential. So this has come out of the back of a fairly low mileage uh, 110 Puma. And it has pretty much all the faults of this diff showing in one nice unit. and I've never been able to work out why. This is a 110 Land Rover crown wheel and pinion. That is a long nose Land Rover crown wheel and pinion. Now the base under the teeth is called the land. Look at the difference in the thickness of these two crown wheels. And what happens on these 110 crown wheels is they can flex and they flex very easily because the land is so thin compared with one that's nearly twice as thick on the long nose. It's almost as though the designers forgot about having a crown wheel and a diff and worked out what space they've got left and made one. But it makes for a very weak crown wheel. And when it flexes, it snaps all the bolts. And then you've got a broken diff. So we've got a fix for this as well. Now, when the bolts break on the crown wheel, they get jammed in, properly jammed in, and you've got a very hard crown wheel and a 12.9 grade bolt. And your chances of getting those out are pretty slim. And it also, as you can see here, that is swarf. Um, it then rattles and chatters and picks up on the actual unit itself. That, that groove shouldn't be there. That should be a smooth surface. So it's completely destroyed the center as well. So, New crown wheel and pinion, which isn't cheap. And a new centre as well. More scrap. And um, we are uh, pegging it. So we have welded in the plates we've got. Now another little thing, you may have watched our video on uh, diff pegging, but it amazes me when we see some uh, where the dog bolts, as they're called, that go in those L's when they're drilled and tapped, aren't that thick. There is about 25 mil of metal by the time we've drilled and tapped that, which with an M16 uh, bolt that goes in there is about right. Because if you ever look at a nut and a bolt, whatever the shank is on the bolt you'll always notice the nut is bigger and that's because in basic engineering terms you're looking at a nut which is one and a half times the size or length if you like of the shank of the bolt so an m10 bolt will have a fifth an m10 bolt will have a 15 mil nut or very close to it so when you're putting an m16 nut in it's 16 plus 8 which is 24 mil so if you've got less than 24 mil of metal in there it ain't strong enough and we're welding what is a cast steel lump with S276 hot rolled mild, which is dissimilar metals. Now that steel there, welded in properly, is a hell of a lot stronger than the drill holes there into a casting, because castings shear and tear off quite easily. So you've got to have enough metal welded in there to take the force that's going to be exerted especially on something like a 110, which is a three and a half ton tow vehicle. For a belt and braces approach, um, which we tend to do anyway, when you TIG weld up cast steel and steel, um, you can get porosity and pinholes. And this one on the right hand side, that hole when it's drilled and tapped is below the oil level. So if you've got any pinholes at all, the oil will find it. So we put in a special resin. Uh, it comes in two colors, it comes in black and it comes in clear. This is black, brilliant. Yeah, I think you've worked that out. Um, and this builds in, he says, just saw there in the left-hand side, a little bloop. This expels any air that's in the cavity between all the various plates and the casing. So that when this has gone off and we drill through there and tap it, those two holes are completely sealed from the rest of the diff. The only way that oil can leak out of here 
is if you actually break the welds, which no one's managed to do so far, um, or uh, you get the capillary reaction of the bolt on the right hand side being under oil actually working its way down the thread and out but we stopped that by putting um, a special uh, rtv sealant on the actual peg bolts when they go in now to peg a short nose we have to do a bit of machining uh, this flat here what we do is we take this flat and we machine it right back to the edge of where this webbing starts and the reason we do that is twofold. One is it gives us room in our peg case to put the pad in, which we'll show you. But also we've seen them where they've been modified for pegging where from my thumbnail to the front here is completely machined away. Now, the reason they do that is it's really quick. You just put it in the lathe, put it on power feed and whack off about 20 mil of metal. The problem is this, this here actually makes a huge difference to the thin crown wheel that goes on the back here so if you machine this away you're weakening what is already a weak crown wheel and then putting a pad back on it so you're sort of not gaining anything what we do is we machine this ridge away back to that there that gives us a nice big flat area we've still got this great big thick lump supporting the back of the crown wheel and then we add our peg pad to the back of it which really does improve the strength of that combination. This is not the diff, this is another one by the way. We've got multiple diffs at the moment showing you how this lot goes together. And here we're just putting a finishing cut on the modification that we have to do to peg a short nose. We basically just flatten it off to give us the room to put the pegging pad, which we'll show you in a minute. Love the power feed. The four pin is now machined. Uh, the flat area there is where it's been through the lathe. It's still supporting the back of the crown wheel, uh, which is a Dana. We've got the 12.9 grade flanged head bolts that fit in there perfectly. Um, and that's where the pad sits. So all we've done is flattened it. It's still got that thickness there supporting the back of the crown wheel, which we think is a better solution than just munching it clean off. We'll show you the other problem that these diffs have. Continuing the everything can go wrong with a short nose differential, we come to the actual differential itself. Now this one um, we've cleaned up quite considerably. All the gears have been through the ultrasonic cleaner and then through my polishing machine. But one of the other things that happens in the center is that you have these two cross beams that go over each other like that. Uh, now, in really simple terms, if you look at that, 50% of the metal has been cut away. So instead of being an 18 mil pin, it's half an 18 mil pin and there's the other half. And very simply, what happens is they break in half. They literally explode. Uh, so the way we get around that is by throwing those in the skip and putting one of our beautiful one piece forged cross shafts in there. That won't break. So. A little bit more information about these short nose casings. They started off in P38s and they ended up in the back of uh, 110s when the Salisbury was taken away. Now, sometimes uh, these gears have shims on the back. Sometimes, believe it or not, they don't. And quite often the drive gears don't have shims on the back. This one does. This one has drive shims all the way around. But the ones that don't, uh, they will basically chew into this like you wouldn't believe and turn them into scrap. So this is one of the later ones. It still had the silly cross shafted pins. Um, and also on the early ones, which have a more normal sort of bolt than this, they're only a 10.9 grade. They break. Uh, so Land Rover on the later ones actually put 12.9s. So we will reuse these because they're fine. So we're going to put this together now and move it forwards towards actually being a half decent short nose diff rebuilt. And here's a perfect example of what happens when you cost cut too deep. So this is an earlier short nose casing that's turned into scrap. And you can see the gear has chewed into that casing really badly. Uh, the other one is just as bad, if not worse. And that's scrap. All for the sake of a couple 
of thrust washers. So when you're looking at these short nose casings and short nose four pin diffs, you've got to be careful. Different varieties. How nice is this? 16 mils, 18 mils, with and without thrusts. And thrusts are designed to actually take the wear and stop this sort of thing happening. Absolutely crazy. This is our one piece uh, forged cross shaft. Um, immensely strong. We had these uh, at CAM and in the 14 years uh, since I first saw one of these, probably even longer, never seen one break. I've seen where the gears explode on each other. They can dig into this, uh, this ground polished surface, but these are really, really strong and really high quality. Um, the only modification uh, different to the ones at CAM is you'll see the flat area here. And that's literally so that when we put the gears on there, the oil can get through as opposed to having it perfectly round. Um, and these work really, really well. They're, and when you consider how much they cost and what a strength upgrade it is, it really is a, a great little bit of kit to put in any short nose diff um, or long nose. We can put these in TD5 110s, P38 short nose. Um, we can also fit them to Ashcroft four pins as one of our other videos show. Um, and it's pretty much fit and forget. Beautiful bit of kit. On a lot of the short noses that we rebuild, we've changed the bolts here for uh, 12.9 grade uh, socket caps and the reason is that again Land Rover cut costs and on the early ones uh, instead of putting a 12.9 they put a lower grade so if you ever see a uh, if you ever see a P38 or 110 with the hex head bolt uh, that is not a great bolt the ones that we use if I get it in focus uh, these ones are much better they're a 12.9 grade and uh, they're also slightly flanged head uh, so another thing they cut costs on and got wrong. We start with the silly little pins that are in here. Um, that has been bent very hard against the adjuster ring and is bent the opposite side. Um, that means the adjuster ring has moved. Uh, which has unwound itself, which means it changes the backlash, which probably explains the clunking noise that the customer had. Uh, this is purely a cost-cutting exercise. Um, we don't uh, use these casings now um, as they are. So on the TD5 110 Puma rear differentials, the short nose diff, which we've now welded up, uh, the casing caps which we've cleared, there are two types of casing. Um, and when they changed and decided they were going to put this uh, pin in, which bends or snaps off or breaks off here, um, they found one of the problems was this carrier cap, when it was bolted down, was moving about and causing this pin to shear. So their idea, instead of actually redesigning this and putting a proper locking ear in, they put these uh, locking collets in. Um, now this does make the case quite a bit stronger. Um, the problem is there's two types of casing and if you have an uncolleted earlier type they're even weaker still but we really do not like this uh, fitting here as you can see this one's nasty so we get around this problem with another upgrade and this is an early casing and the reason we know it's an early casing is that this pin here as we'll show you has a habit of bending and um, shearing off and there's a big adjuster ring in here. And if that bends, the adjuster ring moves, changes all the backlash. If it shears off, the adjuster ring can actually unwind and come out. And this is an early case because you can see the bolts in here are quite big, but you can actually move this quite considerably. It's called shuffling. And the problem with shuffling is it puts a more strain on that pin. And this was a real cost cutting exercise from Land Rover, this pin. So we'll show you what they did to sort out the shuffling. So here you have the casing of a standard early short nose. And here you have the casing of a later short nose. And what they did was they fitted these collets into there. 
and that collet gets quite solid and that collet fits into the other side of that so when you actually bang that down the carrier cap is actually on there much more solid and it stops the shuffling but it doesn't stop this silly pin so even on the casings there are two different types and we'll move on and tell you what else is wrong with these units We have cut that little tab off, we've cleaned up the carrier cap, we've ground it and machined it to uh, fit our special CNC cut uh, Domex 700MC um, and these are going to get, uh, these two little tabs here are going to get welded into there which allow us to fit the old fashioned properly strong locking tab. Uh, these, um, these Domex conversions for the short nose uh, when we weld them in, we don't we don't go welding them down here. It wouldn't be strong enough, to be honest. What we do is we weld them from underneath, and we've left a three quarter of a millimeter gap with a, a little hole in the middle, and we basically seam weld over there with the TIG, and uh, basically that uh, that sorts that out, and it hardly has a raised lump on it because it's welding the eel so it doesn't interfere with the top of the carrier cap and we don't have to grind the weld off which would make it weaker so we need to weld so sometime later of fettling we now have that all uh, welded into place um, now you'll notice that these are not very nice in the way they fit um, and being OCD we're going to wait for these to cool down and then we will take them off and shape them to fit properly and then that is another little issue sorted out for the short nose diff. So now that we've got uh, the old system for the locking ears, uh, we don't even use Land Rover's locking ears. If you look at this, uh, this is a stamping. Uh, so it's basically been whacked out on a machine and the hole is just stamped as a hole and it's not very round, uh, it's sort of oval. And it means that when we fit this, it often wobbles about. It's also a uh, very low grade, mild steel. Um, so we have our own made. Um, this is a second hand one that we're going to reuse, believe it or not. Uh, this is uh, made out of CS80, if you want to look it up. It's as tough as old boots. Laser cut and a laser cut hole, which is a perfect hole. And quite often now, we don't even put the roll pin through. We put a... Uh, uh, a five millimeter uh, 12.9 grade nut and bolt on it so that when we do it up we're actually doing it up tight and it locks into place but you'll see that at the end of the video so we use our own ears as well and those ears basically as you'll see later on drop in to this unit here and lock in to the adjuster ring and that ain't gonna move Regarding the Domex carrier cap conversion, this has just landed on the bench. Um, this is a diff where a half shaft is broken, hoping we can save it. But that is one of our CS80 ears, which is as tough as old boots. And it's bent that really hard. That is well out of alignment. So please someone tell me that they reckon that the silly little three mil hollow cotter pin would have not bent anywhere as badly as that or stayed put it would have sheared off and more damage would have been done so this actually proves the point he will need a new ear in fact he might need two new ears because i don't know how much damage the rest of the diff has done it just goes to prove the point that that pin ain't strong enough The actual seal that uh, we use on the short nose diff is not a bad one. It's a copy um, of what is the triple lip seal on the uh, long nose. You've got one here and you've got one there and one at the back. The problem is that the actual uh, protection for that is via a tin shield um, that sort of sits somewhere near the front. And that big groove that you can see in there, that fills up with mud and then it grinds that and the mud and the water get in and the oil gets out. So here we have the super flange that we fit. And this is so, so tight, you can barely even get anything between there and the casing. And this is an aluminium billet that we have CNC machined. And this actually fits inside the casing and we move the seal further inboard. 
and it makes a hell of a difference. We do them for long nose as well. Um, in fact, we don't build a diff unless someone asks us not to, um, which is normally just um, uh, series restorations. It's such a good little product. Uh, if you can keep the oil in and the water and mud out, your diff lasts an awful lot longer. This is now going to be a build up of everything we can do to a short nose diff to make it stronger. So just to start off, we've got colleted case. We'll show you the collets back in there in a moment. We have it pegged with our own conversion on the outside and we've cleaned it up ready for a build. So while that's being fettled, we'll have a quick look at the center. So for what we can do with a four pin, we have a decent centre. Uh, this centre has been through our polishing machine, so it's all nice and clean and shiny and rust free and ready to go back together. Really nice unit. Um, we've obviously got repolished shims, we've got our one piece forged cross shaft and we've got all the gears that have been through the polisher, uh, all new bolts that have been through the polisher and the thrusts have been through the posture, everything basically is as clean as we can get it and we're going to build a heavy duty centre. So we've now got the bottom gear in place, we've got all the uh, thrusts on, nice bit of oil, forged cross shaft in there, so we're going to put the gear and the thrust shim into there, pop the top on and bolt it all up. There we go, one upgraded 110 TD5 rear center forged cross shaft, everything cleaned, repolished, put back together. Now bear in mind the forged cross shaft here is 18 mil. The early uh, TD5 110s and P38 four pins, uh, Land Rover cut costs even more by trying to fit a 16 mil cross pin in, which is just hopeless. And obviously we can't upgrade that. We can only upgrade the 18 mil ones like this one. It's rare that we actually reuse a short nose crown wheel and pinion. They often have a lot of wear in them because of the fact they've been flexing and they're gonna be noisy. Uh, the patent ones out there are not very good. So we use these, uh, which are genuine Land Rover. Uh, they're not Land Rover, they're actually made by Dana and they are beautiful gears. Uh, they just happen to be a design flaw in being so damn thin. Uh, equally, uh, we have a huge number of genuine Land Rover dry flanges, uh, which are about literally 12 times the price of a patent one. But the quality is in a different style. And we fitted our short nose super flange to it. Um, and that is just so different to the patent stuff that you see. And a couple of Timkin bearings. There's a head and a tail. Uh, we only use Timkin, best you can get. Don't cut corners. And the other two Kimtins have been pressed on already, and there they are on the center, which is all ready to fit. So, with no further ado. So we've now got the dry flange, the super flange, genuine seal, Timkin tail bearing, Timkin head bearing in our peg casing. And now we're going to move in towards the center. And just to make sure everything's right, we've got a special tool that actually measures the poundage at the flange. So we can actually make sure that the collar that's in there gives the correct preload, which I don't think a lot of people bother with, but it's really important. So that's all now set. We also upgraded the bolt there to a higher grade 10.9 uh, flange head bolt because the standard ones are made a little bit out of cheese and can actually pull themselves clean out, leaving you a broken thread in the end of your opinion. These are the collets we spoke about earlier that are now all in place and they stop the shuffling. Postal bronze pad has been fitted to the back of the dog bolts which go to the pegging pads and as you can see this is a really tight fit. Took a bit of working out but it's a great solution. Some considerable time later we have a finished diff. This has got the final upgrades. It's got our Domex carrier cap conversions. It's got Nordlock washers with a high grade uh, 12.9 grade bolts with Nordlock washers underneath. Um, it's got our own XS4x4 ears made out of CS80, tough as old boots. The Domex carrier caps gets rid of the silly pin. The pad 
is beautifully marking on the back of the uh, face there and that allows us to keep that big lump strengthening up the crown wheel which is a beautiful Dana and uh, if you're really quick uh, this diff will be up for sale on the web shop but if not the video is really to show you what we can do to a short nose diff to make it a hell of a lot stronger bye for now Uh, the V, uh, the V, uh, that's all, folks.